Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia the Redhead Baby, Ooh. also known as Fat Cat. <laughs> Here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. A.K.A. Razor, Razor Blade. Blade. <laughs> I can't. We are gathered here today to talk Sister Wives Honey. Yeah. We are doing another rewind. In fact, we are rewinding and recapping season four, episode 11, 11 which is the final episode the of the season four. Mm -hmm. There's so many good things that happened in this episode that we're going to get into. But before we do, we just have to tell you, please, hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast we say a lot of bad words we have stupid opinions and i for one am proud of it yeah we're not going to be apologizing yeah. so if you're a sensitive old, you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby but if you are ready to party and get down with some mormons mm. today welcome to this dumpster and if you are ready to party with us, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, <gasps> patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where the real party's at, all right? It is the best way to support us if you would like to do so. And if you are watching on YouTube, please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because every little thing you do is magic and it really does help us. So thank you in advance thank you all right let's get into this sister wives horse shit first of all have we heard anything further oh. as to whether sister wives truly is returning in august oh that i don't know oh okay but I, we anybody? did get <laughs> anybody we did get some comments on our last um youtube uh -huh. and we got some dms on the instagram okay that i keep forgetting to shout out i'm sorry mm -hmm. um but we did get a dm on instagram from a lady named mimi she sent us this a while ago, and we totally forgot to read it. And I'm Hi, sorry, Mimi. Mimi. Hi, Mimi. Um, but she was talking about Caleb and Maddie's relationship because okay. we had asked about it because yeah. we weren't sure about the timeline. So she says, um, listening to the current episode, and y'all were talking about Maddie and Caleb, um, she said, in this episode from last week, when Maddie tells her parents about Caleb, she says in her talking head that she met Caleb in the ER when Curtis passed away. So if that is to believe, then during the season four – she and Caleb had not met yet. So when she's like texting mm -hmm. boys and stuff, when we were theorizing if she was texting Caleb, it wasn't then. If we believe that if to be true. If we believe that true. To, yeah. to be true. Yeah. So I know that there are rumors and these are unfounded. So mm -hmm. we're not like saying it's true or not, but there are rumors that Maddie was talking to her current husband, Caleb, when mm -hmm. she was like 16 years old, 15, 16, 17 years old. I don't know. I wasn't there. Uh -huh. But I'm always wondering. Yeah. And if we take her at her word, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure when Curtis actually passes, what season that is. Mm, I, I know she was young, though, when she started talking to Kayla. Yeah. Right? It was yeah. a little controversial, wasn't it? Yeah, a little bit. All right. So maybe she was talking to him. Maybe she wasn't. I don't know. I don't know either. But we are keeping our raccoon monocle focused on Maddie. Yeah. And then we got a comment on last week's YouTube video from Bethany lalage 5823 hey, Bethany. and she was talking about cody and mary when they were courting that other lady because oh, yeah. we didn't know anything yeah, about we that we don't know who that is so she said cody and mary were courting a 17 year old girl <gasps> from their church who they were going to marry right after her 18th birthday girl that's gross. Mm. So this girl was introduced to the couple through Christine. Christine was already interested in Cody and was mm -hmm. heartbroken when they started courting the younger girl mm. because she did not agree with it. And I guess Christine stopped being friends with Mary and Cody for a while because of it. Oh. About two weeks before the wedding, the girl, rumor has it, her father abruptly called off the wedding and broke up with Cody for good. Mary called Christine to give her the news and Christine decided to pursue Cody again since the wedding with the younger girl didn't happen. In between, the girl and Christine, Janelle came into the picture having been with Mary's ex-brother-in-law, um, but Christine had known Mary and Cody since they first started dating. Interesting. Yes. I knew there were raccoons out there who Thank you. understood the lore. Yeah. Okay. So that's gross. I wonder what her name was. I wonder what she looked like. Ew, yeah, but they were dating her as a teenager. But then again, that doesn't seem like super out of the ordinary for a cult. 
Oh, well, yeah. And for a cult, yeah. Yeah. And they weren't like super old. I mean, they were in their early 20s and stuff. So right. it's not but like no. it's, but it's still kind of weird. Yeah. I don't know. But don't that's like, like that. judging 1980s, 1990s cult behavior by 2024's <sighs> morality. Uh huh. No, but it is gross. It's very gross. Yeah. I'm just confused as to why that girl hasn't like come forward. Like, why hasn't she, she like probably embarrassed? Said any- <laughs> probably. She was dating <laughs> Cody Brown and Mary. Like, she never wants to be seen Mm-mm. or heard of again. Does not want to be associated with this business. I mean, she's probably still in the cult, too. So maybe she probably. got married off to a different family. Ooh, big yikes. Yep. But anyway, those were the comments that we got. So thank you, Raccoons. We read all of your comments. We do. And if you write us on Instagram, mm-hmm. Beatrice gets those DMs and she loves to get them. I do. So keep them coming, everybody. Yeah. You do. You I just, do. She's a busy girl, but she reads every single one. I do read every single one. All right, let's get into this episode again. Mm-hmm. Season four, episode 11, entitled Leaving the Nest. Leaving the Nest. And it's little Logan. It's Logan. Logan is the eldest child, mm-hmm. the firstborn, the firstborn son. Yep. And it's time for him to tour colleges. Yeah. So we're going to get into that. We're also going to get into some sister wives <laughs> closet bullshit. Shit. Yeah. And then, of course, we have the cul de sac coming into fruition. We're manifesting. Girl. We're shifting our psychology. psychology. And we're manifesting. Oh, my God. So we, much. We talk a little bit about the coins, which is very juicy. Yeah. But anyway, we start the episode with a conversation about Logan going to college. He's kind of stuck between two colleges. One is UNLV in Las Vegas near home, and the other is SUU, Southern Utah University out of state and he can't decide which one to pick well at the beginning of the episode he's kind of leaning towards southern utah university Mm -hmm. because that will actually take him away from his family which Mm -hmm. seems to be his priority he's like get me the fuck out of here yes so i felt that i did as well he wants out now i think that janelle is a little concerned about suu because it's going to be predominantly lds mormon Mm -hmm. and as cody tells us um in this particular scene like lds doesn't like aub or flds and Mm -hmm. so if logan does go to a predominantly mormon college he might be singled out and so they're worried about that but at the same time janelle kind of wants him to be around mormonism because of her faith yeah but doesn't seem like logan gives a shit no he doesn't care at all and i think logan really wants to go out of state he just wants to get out of there and i looked up i I googled mapped it just to see how far it was it's only two and a half hours so it's like not that far he'll take anything i mean but like it's far enough that the family's not going to be making regular trips out there to see him and he can come home for the holidays and it'd be great yeah but unlv is literally like in downtown it's so close so of course the whole family wants him to be close by and he talks about how like the siblings want him around the moms want him around still to be a parent to the siblings Mm -hmm. which is really fucked up it's very fucked up and i think in the final scene he's like even though i'm going to stay in las vegas i'm spoiler alert Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) everybody knows this but even though i'm going to stay in las vegas you have to treat me like a college kid yeah like you cannot treat me anymore like i'm a parent to these children like all of you kids need to understand that i am out of here i'm out And see, this is my controversial hot take on this. I think the only reason why the family is pushing for him to be at UNLV is because the tuition is going to be significantly cheaper. Yes. Because when you have out-of-state tuition, that shit Mm -hmm. is so expensive. So, of course, the family's like, I don't want to help you out with that. We got to fucking pay for four houses with just Janelle's paycheck. Do we really think that they are chipping in for his college tuition? Because I I happen to think that they can't afford it because I was kind of gobsmacked when Janelle, when we get to the lunch, when they're talking about earnest money, when she was talking to Mary about the big ass house in Las Vegas that she rented. She's Mm -hmm. like, you're like looking out for yourself. You want a pool. You want a big house. I didn't know how I was going to feed my kids last year. Mm. That's how desperate we were. And I'm like, oh shit. These people have not saved money. Money, Beatrice, no. for Logan's college tuition. So no. he's getting scholarships. He's getting Probably. student loans. FAFSA. I would be shocked if they were helping him at this point. I don't know. I have no idea. But if, if they are helping, that would be the motivation, right? Like go to the cheaper school mm-hmm. because it's UNLV and it's local and it's local tuition, which is way cheaper. That's my thought on it. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. They're probably not paying shit. It's probably TLC. 
Well, and I honestly. think I think Logan actually cites that as a consideration when he's making his announcement that Cody steps all over. He's like, one of the considerations is financial. Yeah. And then my other big consideration is diversity and like being around people who have different ideas about things. And yeah. Different cultures and stuff. That sounds really interesting to me. Yeah. So that's why he made the decision. But yeah, money was one of the reasons. And that sucks because I want him to be able to have the independence and not be stuck and chained to this family and have to be a parent to all these kids still. Right. Just sucks. But hopefully he's happy at UNLV. You know what really struck me, Beatrice, was like when Cody's talking about how, you know, he's being selfish and he knows it, but like he just wants Logan to be close to the family. Like we want to get home so that Logan can make this association with this home and it's somewhere he can always come back, bring his family back to this home. Like what changed I know. to me? Like Cody was seemingly so motivated by the family culture and by being close to his children. He's talking in this episode about like, sometimes I don't see a wife for five days, which means he's not seeing those kids for five days. Mm -hmm. And he's got tears in his eyes. I'm like, what shifted? When did it shift? Because by the time we get to 2024, he is toxic. Yeah. He is red-pilled. He's black-pilled. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> he's, he's a bad person. Yeah. And I don't know how we made that transit. I don't I think it's probably just like an accumulation of all of the bullshit. Like I think he just got really tired of having to deal with the grievances from the other wives. Because I think at this point, mm. it's Christine that's complaining the most because she's pissed off at Cody. She's the wife that he's not seeing for five days straight. Like I think Christine's the loudest and then it's going to start being Mary because mm -hmm. Mary's going to be like, why aren't you eating my cookie? Like, and I want on? a wet bar yeah. and I want a deck. I want a deck. I need a deck. I deserve I need a it. deck. And then it ends up being Janelle that's complaining still about finances. Like it's mm -hmm. always been that issue and Cody just can't keep up. Like I'm not trying to excuse Cody's shitty ass toxic behavior, obviously, but I just think that's what it is like Cody's just like I'm tired of fucking dealing with it it's got to be an I'm tired to deal with it because he's been dealing with it for 30 years exactly or whatever. he's been dealing with it for 20 years he's yeah. been dealing with it from the very beginning of all of these relationships these women have been fighting mm -hmm. over homes over kids over money over all of it so he just must have hit his saturation point he's like I'm not doing it anymore I'm not attracted to any of y'all you don't have a sweet breakdancing pussy <laughs> yeah. like Robin over here in her diesel jeans. Yeah. So y'all can just get on. Exactly. Well, like Robin just last episode is talking about her philosophy on how to handle her marriage, which is I'm not going to bring up petty grievances. I'm not going to bring up any issues while he's here. I'm just going to cultivate like a very rose colored glasses environment where everything's great. Honeymoon vibes. Yes. So that's why he's like, mm -hmm. oh, I love Robin so much because she never has a problem with me ever. Right. Because she just shoves it down mm -hmm. until the one day that she murders you, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean it. But yeah. yeah. I mean, for real. Yeah. So yeah, it was really weird to see Cody just talk about how much he loves having Logan around. And, the and kids how much around. he wants Logan to stay around. Yeah. And how he wants all of his older kids to stay close to home until yeah. they're married off. And then the kids will be around and the grandkids will be around. And I'm like, wow, you were a totally different person in 2013, 2014. And it's sad to see. And no wonder your kids hate you now. Mm -hmm. Because you've been feeding them this bullshit for years. And yep. then you can't even follow through with it. It's wild. They can't follow through with anything at anything. the end of this ap episode when they actually tell the kids about the homes and the moves that they're making like none of the kids are excited none of the kids cheer and it's Maddie who's like well you guys always tell us you're gonna do stuff and then you never do it so yeah we're not hopeful because y'all are constantly letting us down I felt that so hard yeah. because my parents are low-key like that really oh my god growing up it was always like we were always promised something and then it was just always like oh plans change so then you just grow up thinking like, I'm not going to believe shit that you're going to say because yeah. it's not going to actually happen. That's that's unfortunate. And so I felt bad for the kids because like they're promising all these homes and it's not going to fucking happen. And then their dad's promising, yeah, I'm going to see you guys all the time now that we have the cul-de-sac and then you never see them. No. Nope. So fuck you, Cody. Yeah. Fuck you forever, Cody and Robin. Fuck you forever. And so then speaking of the cul-de-sac, the adults go and tour like model homes that are going to be placed mm -hmm. in or built in the cul-de-sac yes and these homes are fucking huge they are big this is a different world it's a different time and i yeah. think they purchased these homes for like four hundred thousand like to each. four hundred and fifty thousand dollars each Yikes. big ass homes six bedrooms seven bedrooms 
big living rooms, huge fucking kitchens. Wild. Yeah. That was Las Vegas in 2012 to I 2015. Oh, yeah. that's so crazy. And Chanel's talking about how she feels like this is going to be too much money. And I'm like, it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, this is a lot. And then Cody, this is where he's talking about the whole shifting our psychology we gotta manifest it i don't want to sit here and think that we can't get it because then we're not gonna be able to get it so we gotta shift our psychology right trying to convince everybody well and what they end up doing is getting interest only loans which are going to have a balloon payment at the end of i don't know five or ten years which is going to be part of the impetus Mm -hmm. that causes them to leave vegas and go to flagstaff in addition to de yeah going to northern arizona university but like they get terrible loans they only pay the interest on them they put their earnest money down which did you stop the television and look at robin's check to see exactly how much that earnest money was because i I did i didn't see what how much it was how much five thousand five thousand yeah five thousand each so twenty thousand dollars for four homes i mean that's i mean that's kind of eh, whatever (laughs) yeah it's kind of but i feel like i thought earnest money was supposed to be more than that like when you're putting it on like one home it depends. I mean, we're talking about homes that they're purchasing in 2014. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it varies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> well, Janelle's talking about it like it's such a huge chunk. Well, it's $20,000. And is. when you think about one year previous to this, she was wondering how she was going to feed her kids while Queen Mary is in her big ass house with her pool and everything. <sighs> So, yeah, she's worried about $20,000 being taken out of their accounts. Well, and I thought it was funny how they all have to write their own individual checks. But I'm like, it's all coming from the same account. I was like, oh, the audacity, Robin. Right. To get your checkbook out and write a check for $5,000. I'm like, where are you getting that money from, honey? Janelle. But can we say the same thing about Christine? Yeah. Because Christine doesn't have a job either, but she's been the parent to all of the kids for all of these years. So like I give Christine a pass for not having a job. Yeah. But like Robin, you've only been in this family for a year and a half or whatever. And you came into it with debt and you're not working and you're not doing anything. You're making a check that the other women have put in for. Exactly. And same with Mary. I mean, I know Mary was like working before this, right? And then she like quit her job to like go back to school or whatever. But like, did she ever get another job after that i have no idea besides lularoe well and besides tlc like, yeah yeah so, lularoe i think and they're doing their networking market network whatever marketing the fuck is that what is cody calls it so they're doing mlm bullshit yeah. right now and they've got that drink that they're doing oh right so right. i think that mary's involved in that that's ultimately why she's going to want the wet bars because she's going to be doing presentations to her mlm culty people Ugh. so i think she's participating in bringing in money in mm-hmm. that way but she's ultimately going to go on to do LuLaRoe and make a ton, a of, ton money. of money. A ton of money. Yeah. A ton of money. And that's fair. But Meanwhile, I just, I my sister wife's closet ain't going to make any money, honey. Girl, and speaking of that, the yeah. next scene, they go and meet with the jeweler to yes. talk about their designs and stuff because now they have models, right, that yeah. were created. And Christine, <laughs> Christine made me laugh so hard talking about the design. She's like, we have this one design. It's two S's. It's the ball sack. <laughs> It's the booby design. (laughs) And they try to like dance around it. Like, I don't know how it's going to be received because it's two S's that make a W. And we're looking at the design and it looks terrible. It looks like a ball sack. It's like those balls that truckers put at the back of their semis in the back of their big fucking Texas trucks. Like a bunch of brass balls. It's terrible. It's a terrible design. It is so bad. But Robin's so defensive of it. She's like, well, let's just go see. Let's go see the models because I'm sure they're going to be beautiful. But I love Christine saying, I mean, part of me feels like this is stupid, though. (laughs) And nobody's ever going to like these booty ass designs. (laughs) Who's going to buy this junk? No one. And then Robin's like, but you can't think like that. (laughs) We have to believe. You've got to change your psychology. Change your psychology, Christine. Manifest it. So they go and look at the designs. And there's a ring design and it looks horrible. And then a necklace. I think they show a necklace. I can't remember. It's all of it's bad. These people have no class. <laughs> None at all. These people have no worldly experience or class. Well, and like I said, I had watched a couple episodes, I think in season five, where they're like doing little shows and going to farmer's markets and stuff, trying to sell this jewelry. And they're trying to sell it for like $90 a mm-hmm. pop or something like something mm-hmm. crazy like that when it's so ugly and it's like made of nickel alloy or something. It's horrible. <laughs> Right. And nobody buys it. Nobody buys it. Not even in that economy, much less this economy. We ain't buying that stuff. Absolutely not. No. It's bad. And then we have the adults going to lunch to talk about 
earnest money. Right. We have got to make a decision here. Like, are we going to trust God? Are we going to trust our ability to manifest? Our psychology. Are we going to put this earnest money down? And of course, Janelle, who just procured her real estate license, Uh explains to these dumbass people what earnest money is in the first place. (laughs) And she's like, we're going to have to make a decision now. This will hold the properties for 30 days while we secure financing. Do we want to do it or do we not want to do it? And then we've got Christine, who's essentially a toddler. She's like, well, I'm scared. Yeah. I like the idea of a house, but but I'm just very scared. And then we have Robin, who mm-hmm. is very quiet. But behind the scenes, we know she's manipulating everything. Totally. She wants this big ass house. Yep. And then we have Mary sitting at the table at lunch. This bitch. And she starts talking about why she's a little bit reticent to say yes and to put some earnest money down. Now, what she says in the restaurant is, like, there's been some experiences that I've had in this family where I've been made to feel bad about having things when other wives weren't able to. What does she say exactly here? She's she's alluding to it. She's not outright saying it because Mary never says what she actually feels Ever. or what she's upset about or pissed off about. She just puts up walls and she vaguely alludes to it. So what did you hear her saying in the restaurant? I mean, she just basically says, due to past experiences, mm-hmm. it's hard for me to be excited about these things or to express what I want because I feel like I'll be judged. Right. That's what it is. And then we go to the couch. Yes. The interviews on the couch where we have Mary elaborate that there have been some times in the past where she has felt punished by and judged by people and some of whom are in the family. Mm-hmm. Because she gets a portion, an equal portion, but she doesn't have the same amount of kids. And then, of course, I look right at Janelle. Janelle looks pissed. Oh, she's because so pissed. Because Mary's calling out Janelle. Uh-huh. And you can tell that they have some history here. And Janelle actually admits it on the couch. She does. Because she talks about how, yeah, there have been times where I've totally thought that way. And my kids have come to me and been like, why does Mary get this big ass house when she only has one kid? Why does Mary get all of this shit? And then Janelle talks about how when they moved to Vegas and they were struggling so hard financially, they were broke as fuck. And Mary insisted on this big ass house Mm -hmm. with a pool to rent when they couldn't afford it. And Janelle's like, my kids were going hungry because we had to pay for your house with a pool. And Janelle says on the couch, like, it's been hard in the past to see how I've been trying to conserve and budget. But then we have other wives who are just spending their money on all these fancy things. And I'm like, well, what about the rest of us over here? And so she's clearly talking about Mary. And then that takes me back to the Lehigh house Mm -hmm. and how Mary had the upstairs center or middle portion of the house which was attached to the main kitchen Mm -hmm. and she would not let the kids from Janelle's house on one end and then Christine's house on the other end in the basement pass through her middle portion really the central portion of the house because she wanted to have a house that felt like her own and so the kids had to actually go outside even in the winter walk outside from Christine's to Janelle's or Janelle's to Christine because Mary needed her space even though she only had one kid left Leon Mm -hmm. and it was just her yep and so these are ancient wounds yeah I think Janelle and Christine are carrying around but on the couch Mary's crying she's making herself into a victim because she feels bad and if she had her way she would have had eight children and filled up every single bedroom but the cards didn't pan out that way for her and Mm -hmm. she can't help it and she's crying and it's wild because Cody is kind of like defending her and being like, well, I also want a nice house too to come over to. Like I have standards of living. So like I want it to be nice as well. So he's like trying to defend Mary's expensive ass taste. And then he does talk about the Lehigh house and he talks about how they were mortgage poor and he like turns to Christine and is like, you couldn't even visit your dad. Like we had, we were broke. And Christine's like, yeah, that was terrible. And Cody's like, well, but that was the best time ever. We were all together. So like, this is why we have to have the cul-de-sac because even though we're going to be poor and we can't have vacations for a long time and we can't do fun things, we're all going to be together. So isn't that great? Right. And Christine starts to like object and be like, 
no, I mean, that kind of sucked ass. Like I wanted to see my dad. I wanted to like go and take trips and stuff. And Cody's trying to defend it again. And then Mary's like, I've got expensive taste. It's like this whole big old thing. But Cody People actually so tells Christine on the couch, yes. you can save your grocery money. Save your grocery money for vacation. Clip your fucking coupons if you want to go on vacation because the needs of the family outweigh the needs of you and this relationship and vacations. But the needs of the family are groceries. <laughs> mm-hmm. Are the kids being yeah. fed? Yes. And everybody being secure financially. Right. Not Mary having a fucking wet bar and a dick. Right. I thought Mary was so wrong for this whole conversation because when she's arguing with Janelle about it and Janelle's talking about there've been times where I've had to conserve and blah blah blah. blah Mary's like, well, I'm sorry that I took from what you thought was yours. Mm -hmm. And Janelle's like, it's, I don't think it's mine. It's the whole family. And at the time in Lehigh, it was just Janelle and Cody providing for everybody. So it's just so fucked up to me. Like I can understand Mary's perspective of like not wanting to be punished for only having one kid. Like she shouldn't live in just like a fucking shack, right? No, she shouldn't be ostracized. Right. She shouldn't be othered. But at the same time, do you really need a 4,000 square foot home for you and Leon? And no. on the couch, she even says, I don't need to have seven bedrooms, but I might want a wet bar <laughs> and I might want a deck. And it's the way she says it so petulantly. Mm-hmm. But I probably want a deck though. Yeah. And I probably want a wet bar. So just explain expect it yeah so just give me that at least Uh, it sounds like they're scraping all of their shekels together so that they can even afford to pay on interest only loans so you guys can have a home and you're talking about wet bars and decks i know i'm going to be crazy when we get into wet bar season girl i know i'm going to be nuts when we get into the construction of these homes but like mary is already starting see now if it were me and I had sister wives. Even if I was the first one, I mm-hmm. was the head bitch in charge. I would be so conscious to like what I'm contributing. And I wouldn't need to like carve out space and power for myself at the expense of all these other women and children that you say are your own children. Right. So like, Mary, what are you doing? But at the same time, let's be practical here. Because this builder, this developer is going to build four spec homes uh-huh. of the same approximate size he's not going to want to build three four thousand square foot homes and then one little ranch for mary at 1500 square feet that's right. not going to happen right so if you want mary to be in your cul-de-sac then of course she's going to have to have a commensurate sized home but at the same time it's the entitlement yes that's really seeping through and you can tell that everybody else on that couch has been dealing with this from mary for a long time yep but the one that comes to her defense is Robin, of course, with her weird fucking speech about uh, 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 uh. kids scuffing furniture and surrogacy. Like, what was that? Well, uh, it didn't make any well, sense. Mary was talking about her expensive taste and how she takes how she care, takes of, nice care of all of the things that she has. She knows she has this expensive taste, mm-hmm. but like, I'm very careful with everything that I procure. And then Robin takes the fucking spotlight again to put herself up on the surrogacy altar once more. It was such a non sequitur to me. It didn't make any sense. Mm-mm. We don't need your fucking declaration about how much happier Mary would be if she had a bunch of kids running around in her house and how her furniture wouldn't be as pristine if she had kids. You're just highlighting the fact that she's infertile. Yeah. And you're highlighting the fact that you're making this big ass sacrifice. Why in this moment do you feel the need to do that, Robin? Maybe to commem- commiserate, is that the word? Mm-hmm. With Christine and Janelle because they're the ones that are sacrificing everything. Christine has to save her fucking grocery money and Janelle has to figure out how to finance all of this shit because Cody's not working and nobody else is working. Mm -hmm. So they're sacrificing. So Robin sacrificing by giving up her body. But at the same time, Robin is the same kind of wife as Mary where she also feels entitled to have a big ass house. Mm -hmm. She's only got three kids right? or not even. She's got four kids. No, she's got Dayton. Aurora, Aurora being, Brianna. Oh, does she have Solomon. four now? Yeah. So, okay. So yeah, she has. She's a got four kids. She's got a lot of kids. But still, she yeah. ain't working. But she's financing. new. She's brand new. She's not entitled to everything. I don't know. There's just something about Robin. I just. She's just. Her eyes light up. And I watched when she talked about cutting her earnest check. She's like, so yeah. So today we're getting our checkbooks out. We're all paying individually so that we can claim these mm-hmm. pieces of property. Like there was like a shift in her eyes where she felt 
embarrassed. A little like bit. she knows anything in her account is coming from Cody. And anything Cody is giving you is coming from Janelle yep. and Mary and Christine. You know you're not earning any of this money. Nothing. You know you are a fucking parasite, a barnacle on the back of this family, bitch. And I don't care how nice you are mm -hmm. or how you want to sacrifice yourself on that altar. I see you. Oh, yeah. Now, what I did think was very interesting, though, was when Christine turned to Mary and said, I just want to apologize because I did think you should have a smaller house. Yeah. And there was a time where I was really wondering why you were asking for all of this shit, Mary. And I'm really sorry because I know that made you feel bad. And Mary starts crying because uh -huh. she's in her victim era. And I'm like, I can't. That's weird. I think that's very weird. And she probably, Christine probably did that because she felt guilty and mm -hmm. she's on camera. So she doesn't want to look like a bad wife because she's already a bad wife in Cody's eyes, right? Because she's mad and she's Complains, complaining. She nags. Yes. And she's not getting anything from him. So she's probably doing this for the cameras, also for Cody, like in a very performative way. But I'm like, why can't somebody in this family just be honest with Mary and be like, yeah, you're a spoiled ass bitch. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you don't deserve a $4,000, a 4,000 square foot home. Right. We have a million kids and you can make the argument, I guess, that Mary is going to be having the family over. So she needs some space. Again, like I said, she shouldn't be living in a shack. She shouldn't be living in some tiny no. ass apartment while everybody else gets these big homes. No. I get it. But you don't need a fucking wet bar. You don't need a fucking deck unless you're paying for it yourself. Maybe she is. I Maybe she ultimately she does. Is. I don't think she is. I don't know. She's drawing on resources that Janelle does not think that they have. But on the couch, Janelle capitulates and she says, you know what? Get whatever y'all want. Like, it should all be equal. Mm -hmm. I'm not even worried about what you guys want to do with your plots of land. I just want to get my house together. I want to put my kids in there and everything's yep. copacetic. But the reason Mary is having such a big emotional response is that she knows it's not fair. It's not. She yeah. knows that the spotlight's on her mm -hmm. because she's getting such a big portion yep. and she's not contributing in equal measure. Plus, she doesn't need it. Yep. Now, if Cody said, okay, well, you can have a 4,000 square foot home, but like you're going to have the communal office, you're going to have the communal playroom, the kids are going to be able to come over and mm -hmm. use your yard, like we're going to designate a portion of your home for the general family use, she would not be happy with that. Exactly. And yeah. that's why I have a problem with her because exactly. she's not willing to do that. It's me, 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 mine, mine, mine. Right. Unearned bullshit. And it's totally just because she wants to have power. And I get it now that we know that Cody melted down her ring mm -hmm. for Robin and she kind of got ousted. Like she's on the outs right now. She's not getting any from Cody probably. Oh, uh, no. She's got no wedding ring. She's not the, she's gonna soon not be the, first legal wife she's mm -hmm. gonna be divorced it's coming up mary so i think that's probably why she's like clawing at this status and like all of this superficial stuff but it's so lame it's so lame because when you contrast that with janelle in season 18 who's just wanting a fucking casita mm -hmm. she just wants a house she just wants something she's willing to live in a fucking rv on the property right so she can have maybe some chance at building her own equity her own place and she's not complaining as much. Like, you know what I mean? And juxtapose that with how Mary is living in Flagstaff. Exactly. Now, granted, she's living a very lonely, lonely life. But Nobody visits her because she's spent, I don't know, 20 to 30 years being a total bitch in this family. Right. But like she's living in a mansion by herself with her dog without yeah. even Leon and Audrey. Or is it Audrey? Yeah, it's Audrey. Leon and Audrey. Like, they don't even come over and visit. It's just... Mary, I and know. she still needs the big ass home. Yeah. But granted, now she can pay for it on her own. Right. So it's not a drain on the resources. Exactly. And so the rest of the family's not going to care. But newsflash, they also don't care about you. Yep. I guess that's your karma, though, for being so entitled and spoiled. Yeah, I, I mean, guess. And terrible and awful and abusive. I mean, there's a there's a light side to that, too. Like, Mary was buying into the dream of sister wives, just like way back in the day, Leon was buying into the dream oh, of sister yeah. wives. And, you know, when Mary was young, she married this guy. She loved him. She believed in the dream. She believed in the vision. But that didn't work out for her. I do I feel guess. bad for her, but I would feel bad better about how I felt about her if she were telling the truth in 2024 year of right. our Lord but she's 
stays out here lying. She still she lying. stays out here having retreats with people for six lying about how worthy she is. Ugh. And it's not that she's not worthy, but you're a liar. You're a liar. You're you not a truth teller. You can't even write a tell all book. You can't even spill no. all the tea and just go full villain era. No. I mean, like people, oh, please. that'd be so great. Like people are shitting on Christine on Instagram because she's still being petty. Like she posted a video not too long ago of her and David eating nachos and oh, she's I bringing that. that up. I love that. And I love it. Like, I don't care that she's being petty, but people are like, oh, stop it. You're a mature woman. Stop being petty. Fuck it's off. so stupid. But I'm like, at least she's being real. Like nobody else and is. And she's being funny. Exactly. She's making light of it. Yeah. And we can't tell anybody else what their healing process should be, although we do purport to do that with Mary and on we're this gonna very judge podcast. It, right? And we are definitely going to judge all of these people. Yeah. But Mary is just really exhausting so exhausting like so inauthentic her need to be a victim and her like her quickness to say walls up yeah i'm just i gotta protect myself and my emotions i'm like (sighs) why i mean if you want to actually heal these relationships and have a better situation in your family you're gonna have to communicate about it why aren't you willing to do that why do you have to protect yourself these people are so undeveloped psychologically like they they're not conscious. We're dealing with unconscious, frankly, stupid people. Oh, 100%. Stupid people. They're dumb, all dumb. fucking stupid. Dumb, dumb people. By the way, what? sidebar. What? <laughs> well, it is in this episode, but when they go to the model home and they're checking it out before they decide to make the commitment and Mary gets into that tub. Oh, I know. <laughs> I thought about yeah. the picture. Wasn't Mary in a tub when she was sucking on a banana? Like a banana. Was, was it, it that tub? Was it that tub? <laughs> That was my question. I'm like, Amazing. is it the very top? I mean, it's I kind it. of seem to recall mm. it was very similar to wow. that. Wow, so sexy. Woo, foreshadowing <laughs> ahead. Mary in that tub three I can't years later. wait until we get to those episodes. Being catfished. Oh, my God. That's oh my the God. juice, honey. I haven't seen any of those, so it would be fresh eyes. That's Oh, God, you're going to love can't it. I wait. That is, this, that is the era in which I picked up Sister Wives oh, was the catfish era because delicious. I was just like, so I heard about it. And I'm like, I got to watch. <laughs> I gotta see what's going on. Because I heard that she was catfished by a woe man. Oh. Woo, girl. Anyway. I love it. Anyway, back on track. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So we have Logan and Janelle and Cody going to tour UNLV campus. I don't care. And I'm snoring. I'm bored. And then the adults meet with Mona. That's when they sign the checks yeah. for the homes and everything for the earnest money. And then Cody goes running. He runs with his hair flopping in the wind. With the gospel music in the background. <laughs> that was so I good. I had to pause that it. Was so I good. was triggered. I don't know. I was just like, why are you playing? It was so loud. This gospel music while Cody's running. Running because it's I, a beautiful moment. I don't understand. He's running as a symbol to connect all of the properties and all the homes. Okay. It's amazing. <laughs> and he asks the women on the couch, "Did I look stupid?" And they're like, "No, not at no. all. No, it was great. It meant a lot." But yeah, all of them. But were I mean, like, the you look very dumb. The spotlight has to be on you at all times, <laughs> and so we're over here signing these earnest money checks yeah. and making this commitment on our behalf because we're the women who are going to be on the loans but you got to be running around You're running around all these four lots and taking all of the attention <laughs> it was ridiculous yeah flamboyantly gay very very flamboyantly gay, gay. i'm just ref- i'm referring back to season one or two yeah. when all of when cody's friends. friends said he was always flamboyantly gay because he is <laughs> perhaps <laughs> it was great and then the last <laughs> scene of the show yeah was Garrison's birthday and that was really sad because it was not highlighted at all and nobody cared because Garrison's birthday is overshadowed by not only Logan's college announcement but also Cody and the wives announcement about the earnest money for their house Mm -hmm. and I'm like where's Garrison he's like eating his piece of cake by himself and it's really sad yeah I was really bummed out by that but everybody's like dressed up in college t-shirts to show their support for like logan they want him to all go to unlv right because if logan goes to southern university then their father leaves exactly where's daddy yeah (laughs) we want daddy to stay in the house please please maddie's like this is my best friend Mm -hmm. i love logan and if he leaves i'm gonna be very very sad yeah and he ultimately ends up choosing UNLV, like we already said. He has a whole speech. He's like, don't come and visit me. And he's like, and the caveat is I'm in college. I am not here. You I'm don't see me. I'm invisible. Yes. Don't come pulling me back into your bullshit. It really, really 
did stick out to me how much he was trying to make the point throughout the entire episode. Like, I'm not going to be here. Yeah. Like, I'm getting on. I'm going to get my own shit together. You cannot expect me to come back and take care of everything for all of you. Yeah. Like, he was really taking great pains to say that to everybody. I felt bad for him Mm -hmm. because, I mean, he just had to repeat that over and over and over again. He's the oldest kid. He's the one with all this responsibility. He's been grown up since he was like 14. And he even said, like, if I'm expected to take care of all of these kids, I'm going to be middle aged by the time that they age out. Like, I can't be here until I'm a 40 year old man taking care of all of your kids, mom and dads, (sighs) dad and moms. For real. Mm -hmm. Props to him for having the balls to say that, though, and to like stand up and be like, no, I need my independence. And so I hope he continues to do that Mm -hmm. in the other seasons because like I haven't seen any of his like college era or anything like that. So I don't know what goes on. Hopefully the family's not nagging him for like babysitting and all this bullshit. Hopefully they leave him be. Right. Because they should. It's going to pass on to Aspen yeah. and Leon and the other. The older ones. Older kids. Yep. yep. And then we also have Cody announcing to the family that they're having, they're going to give earnest money for these plots of land. These kids don't know what earnest money is. And they also don't care. And the way they announce it, though, is so for the cameras. It's like, do yeah. we have to, before Logan gets to make his big announcement, and also after we didn't even celebrate Garrison's big day, like, let me just get on in here and tell everybody that we made these earnest money payments. And the kids are like, okay, and what does that mean, though? And... And so I think it's Christine who says, we put a down payment. We yeah. put a down payment on these homes. Yeah. And the kids are like, okay. Okay. That's cool. I don't care. I don't care unless we actually get to move into them. And yep. nobody cheers for it. Like everybody was cheering for Logan's announcement and everything. Mm-hmm. But then when the, the adults announced this house idea, they're like, I don't, I don't give a shit. And Mary is the only one, oddly enough, that's like defending the kids' reaction because Cody's like upset by it. Everyone else is like, why aren't you guys excited? Why can't you be happy about it? And all the Mm -hmm. kids are like, well, you don't ever follow through with your promises. And we've heard a million times that you're going to do this or we're going to go here and then it never happens Mm -hmm. and we're disappointed. So we are not going to get our hopes up and expect you guys to actually follow through like dependable, stable parents. We're going to assume that you're not because that's what you've always done. Yep. And Mary defends the kids. She's like, I get where they're coming from. And even Janelle on the couch is like, yeah, I can understand why they would be kind of disappointed. And so we really have to make sure we get these homes because otherwise they're never going to take us seriously on anything. And they're going to lose complete faith in us. Mm -hmm. And we know now that they get the houses. So the kids do end up probably... Yeah, they're going to have a season of their lives when they're going to be proximate with one another again, but they're going to get really pissed. Like the older kids are going to get really pissed, especially Maddie and Caleb, who actually moved back to Las Vegas. They're Mm -hmm. married. They moved back to Las Vegas to be closer to all of them. And then they're going to announce that they're moving to Flagstaff. Yeah. So. Yikes. Yeah. And did you notice when they were picking out their plots, like Mary and Robin are together Uh and then christine and janelle are by each other i'm like that's interesting how that works out i did notice that but it it was interesting that christine's house is like in direct opposition to robin like so she's seeing yes that cody's there all the time she will see it yep dude i bet she's like shia labeouf and disturbia just like with the freaking (laughs) binoculars at night the raccoon monocle (laughs) just seeing like is cody over there again he's still there my god yes that's what i would be doing yes and getting more and more and more upset so that by the time they get to Flagstaff, Christine is one year away from telling him to go shove it all the way up his fucking Mormon ass. Yes. I'm out of here. I and I didn't put it. you on the deed, honey. <laughs> so I'm taking all the money. You could have your stupid fucking prairie dog infested coyote past Bye. land. I'm going to take the equity during COVID. Mahalo. And I'm going to go back to Utah and be with my people. Yes. And, and I love that for her. I love it too. Fuck you, Cody. That's why you're so mad because yep. she has control and she took the money. Totally. Yep. And now she's posting passive aggressively uh-huh. on instagram eating nachos because you know cody's watching yeah. you know him and robin are scrolling yeah they're reading all the comments and they're Do you seeing think so? all the posts totally oh really how could you not when you're that self-centered i guess i mean but if you have to protect your ego so much i would think that he would not want to be on the internet and see how much people hate him because people do not like him or his wife even if he's not reading comments he's totally checking christine's instagram that's why she's posting about it mm. that's why she's posting the nachos i love that nachos. for him i love that i love it too it's, i think it's great it's fantastic 
So good. So we leave this entire season with Logan getting ready to go off to college mm-hmm. and the family ready to procure these homes in the cul-de-sac. And yeah. So I went straight to season five, episode one. Did and you it, watch? I did not. Oh. But I looked at like the description and yeah. it's about them having bad credit <gasps> and being in debt <gasps> and how this is going to jeopardize their home buying. Oh. So this is, I'm wondering if this is why they end up getting these booty ass, interest ass loans. I'm not sure, but I, I just, I just love to learn about the coin. <laughs> Me too. So I can't wait to get into season five. Now for all of season five, they're longer episodes yeah. because season four and beyond before mm-hmm. was all like half hour episodes. Minute, yeah. Now we're up to an hour. Which is good, but also bad at the yeah. same time because a lot of it's like filler. Yeah. But that means there's going to be more like, Juicy little tidbits, yeah. more sides. I loved seeing Janelle and Mary get Aww. into it. You could, you could see the problems yes. in that moment, and that this is like years and years and years of problems yep. between these two women, based on Mary's fucking entitlement mm-hmm. and the fact that Janelle's a Taurus. She's a bull. She's ready to gore your ass. Yes, I loved it. I want to see more of this. I want to see more of that too because it was so good yes. and mary just crying on the couch trying to get our sympathy boo bitch. hoo bitch boo hoo nobody fucking cares about your expensive tastes yeah and by the way it's not expensive that no, fucking couch that you selected ew it was ugly it's, it, 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 i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be bougie and who am i to be bougie but i am somebody to be bougie I'm gonna she's very right bougie. i've been around the world and i yeah yeah yes i'm just saying i'm like it's not that expensive taste mary no and even then you can be practical like you're not oh, gonna sit there and sure. demand when you guys are broke or no, whatever no and be like i need my web bar no <laughs> i need to go to the ritz carl day absolutely not i am the first person to be like it's beans and rice for the whole month bitches Period. yes absolutely but like mary calm down seriously i love it so much guys Me too. i love it so, so much which good. is why we have to continue with the sister wives content yep. until sister wives season 19 comes back oh, I can't even wait. if it oh. means it's going to be at the expense of some teenage hoes on unexpected because we also have welcome to plathville and bitch 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 i can't that's coming back wait on tuesday on tuesday and on olivia's oh my God. ass is on the show she's got a new boyfriend Oh my god! And she's posting can about Can we talk hickeys. about that? Oh my god! Can we talk? Uh, can we please? We have to. Okay. So first and foremost, did we mention the hick- hickeys last week? No, I don't think so. Okay. So she made some sort of a like an uh, ad I post. Cringed so deeply. Like she was just like, I don't know why people have such a hard time with hickeys. I mean, like, what's the big problem with hickeys? And she's showing the side of her neck which has a hickey on it, and I'm just like, oh god, when you're forty. Olivia, girl, you're going to be embarrassed. It was so cringe. And like that was in response to mm-hmm. she had posted like an ad or a photo or something. And she had had a hickey. Yeah. And a bunch of the Karen moms or whatever were commenting being like, "Eh, that's like not classy. Ew, gross. Why are you showing your hickey? And then she made a whole minute and a mm-hmm. half long video talking about her hot take. And she was proceeding to talk down to these mm-hmm. women and be like well at least i'm getting some at least i'm getting my pussy a you guys are just so bitter blah 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 blah. and it was really embarrassing it was very secondhand embarrassing it was very cringe and very unnecessary because look i don't care if you have hickey but like That's you took fine. the picture in the first place to show that you had a hickey so that you could get back at ethan and all of the people who watch the show that hate you i.e beatrice and me Us. Like you <laughs> took the picture just to show beatrice and delia that you had a hickey okay and then when people said something about it now you want to make a whole ass video about it showing your hickey and it was just really 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 cringe it was very embarrassing and then she posted like a photo set not too long ago where she has a picture of her and this guy kissing. Listen, And this guy looks like a total dweeb. There's a lot you can say about Ethan Plath, okay? He's a translucent person. Totally. I mean, when you squint, you can't even see him. I can see right through him. I can see his intentions and his motivations because he's translucent. He's so white. He's so I don't want to say Hitler youth, but I have in the past. Yeah. (laughs) Just saying. You can say a lot about Ethan. Yeah. Okay, he's not everybody's type. Sure. Clearly. But this guy... He looks You're gonna follow up Ethan Plath with that bubble boo dick. With this milk toast looking dude. With this mustachioed <laughs> nerd ass dad bod. I mean, okay, look, who am I? Uh, Far be it same. from fucking me. Right. But I'm just gonna judge you. Because you put him you put him out there. Yep. You knew we were watching. Yep. You knew we had monocles. Yeah. So we're gonna see what you post. And I'm just like, okay, Olivia, first of all, you're drop dead 
fucking gorgeous. They're so I beautiful. could only on my best day. No, actually, I was oh, brutal. Yeah. Oh. But I mean, I'm just saying women aspire to be as beautiful so as you beautiful. are. You're so gorgeous. Like you could have literally anybody if you like fix the personality part. Seriously. If you fix the personality part and became gracious yeah. and self-aware, like you could have anybody. You could have a billionaire baby. Yeah. And this derp, is that, can I say derp yes, in 2024? Yes, you can say derp, yeah. This derpy dweeby guy. Okay, <laughs> have fun, babe. I just can't. It's so like this whole like Taylor Swift like era of like, I hate my ex type of thing. It's all this bitter, toxic bullshit. I'm like, you can be totally successful you can be such a great person without shitting on ethan at yeah. every fucking turn it's super and talking immature about your hickeys like nobody fucking cares and i am not looking forward to her being on this season because all of the plathville fans mm-hmm. that are very loud on oh the instagram they hate us so much they hate us so much they hate us but they are like so happy she's on the show they're like if we could just have a spinoff of only olivia plath it'd be so amazing <laughs> i love her so much and i'm like why <laughs> For what? I don't understand. <laughs> Please tell me. Like, I want to root for her, but I just can't. I can't. She's a trash bag person. She's horrible. She's such a narcissist. She is the other side of the coin with Kim Plath. She's so Which bad. her own sister, Lydia Grace, told her when I she know. said it must be like looking in a mirror when you look at Kim Plath. <laughs> because you're a fucking malignant narcissist. And how all of these Taylor Swifties yep. think she's so fucking fantastic. I don't get it. Maybe I'm old, honey. No. Maybe I've been on this planet for too long. I'm maybe this young is, and maybe I this hate is her. General currency of 2024, as far as women are concerned, but she is the worst. She is so bad, and I'm just not looking forward to it. I'm not, but I'm I am looking forward to seeing Kim's drunk sugar body sugar with body. Ken not Palmer. Her sugar body. I can't, I can't <laughs> wait. She's living her best alcoholic life <laughs> with Ken Palmer, the pilot, honey, in Florida, somewhere in I Florida, know. just getting it out. Oh. She's happy and she's ready to party. It does seem like in the preview, I'm getting drunk. Yeah. It does seem like Barry <laughs> is going to date. I know. I'm excited about Micah's that. Micah's got his cute little shirt off. Micah's in his straight phase. Is and he's he? living with I a think girl. He, I think he's in his twink phase. Girl. No, he's living with a girl right now, though. He's got a long-term relationship with this girl, and he moved in with her. Okay. But I just... Beards exist. Is twink a bad word? You gotta no. correct me because I'm the old one in the no. house. Like, so if Twink is Twinks, bad... called himself Twinks. Okay, yeah. I'm just saying he's kind of Twinky to me. Very. He seems to be a little bit. And I and love we that love for that. him. And even in the we last season, he was living in LA and he yes, was talking uh, about like how he's open to whatever. He's down for whatever. And I'm like, okay, it's okay to be I've gay. been feeling that for you, Micah. So it's okay to be gay. All right, I'm, I'm into it. And then Mariah, mm. Rebel. She's on Instagram now saying that she's changing the way she dresses for God. Oh, okay. So Why? now she's going to dress more modestly because she's a born again Christian. But forgiven she's rebel. always been a Christian. I mean, and she's always dressed this way. I thought that was connected to her alopecia no. and her self-expression. Okay. I now mean, if she's she wants back to make into... a, a choice to be more mo- modest mm-hmm. in her presentation, I think that's okay. Yeah. So we're I'm interested that. to get back with her and I'm really interested to find out what's happening with Lydia Grace, <gasps> honey, because you know her pussy's on fire. You mean Lydia Plath? Lydia Plath. Yeah. Not Lydia Grace. Yeah. Also, with a pussy on fire. Yeah, totally. But Lydia Plath <laughs> has a pussy that's on fire. With no, a boy. she cannot help it. Now, she does put herself in a closet and talks to Jesus and writes him notes uh-huh. because she does not want to address the fact that that pussy is on fire. But, yeah. honey, she got a man. Oh, yeah. And so I'm just wondering what's happening. Is he kissing it? Is he kissing her? It. Oh, her little. <laughs> Is she getting any? <laughs> a little man in the boat. Is her psychology shifting, I'm... as Cody Brown likes to say? I don't know, but I, I hope do so. want to know. I want to know so bad. And then bad. there's little Isaac. Oh, my God. He's so handsome. He is so handsome. He's and his wrangler. He's oh a God. pilot and everything. He's going to be in the Air Force. Yes. If I was 18, honey, forget about it. Oh, for real. For Get about he is it. the most handsome he's, out of all of them. And he's got swagger. Oh, he's yeah. got confidence. He's like, this fucking family's a trash fire, yeah. but I'm all right. And he's actually straight. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually straight. Yeah, there's a lot of fluidity there in this is. family. Like if we were to do like yeah. a breakdown, but we won't because that's inappropriate. And well, we would only I do would. that on Patreon. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I'm totally going to do it. <laughs> Oh, uh, but we're excited. So that's so excited. <laughs> that's Tuesday. Obviously, we're excited. So yeah. we're going to cover the entire season. Yes. If you don't watch Plathville, first of all, why? why? You should. Second of all, you could catch up. You could watch season 
Is it last season five? Or yeah, four? or four. Watch season oh, yeah. four and yeah, five. Yeah, four and five. Because, oh, oh God, yeah. Olivia was such a bitch in she season was such four. A bitch. And then they get divorced in season five. Oh. And then here we are, season six. But you could catch so up. Good. There is still time. And then yeah. take the journey with the raccoons, yes. baby. I cannot wait. I can't wait either. All right, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get the fuck up out of here? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. Ah! It really helps us grow the pod, and we really appreciate it, so thank you so much. We will be back next week to talk about the aforementioned Welcome to Plathville. Mm -hmm. That is going to be the only podcast episode or YouTube video that we are going to be releasing, and then the week after that, we'll be back to two episodes in that week so just bear with us as the schedule shifts but until then please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out Bye. bye guys